Hello world, welcome back to Razor RC. Today I wanted to shoot a video talking about how to afford more stuff in RC. So RC stuff is expensive, um, stuff's always changing, new products are always coming out, there's lots of cars, vehicles, accessories, electronics that you'd like to buy and unfortunately unless you're super wealthy uh, you can't buy everything that you would like to. So I just want to shoot a video talking about how to stretch your dollar, how to get more bang for the buck, and basically afford more stuff. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is that um, if you think about it, RC stuff is no different than any other commodity out there. So uh, whether you're talking about, I don't know, soft drinks, peanuts, whatever, prices fluctuate and go up and down. And uh, it's a commodity like anything else. And the first rule of, of buying and selling is that you want to buy low and sell high, obviously, right? Uh, if you're overpaying for stuff, you're going to be spending too much. You're not going to be able to afford as much stuff. And so, yeah, the first thing uh, that's important to realize is to buy low. And <clears throat> prices change a lot. Uh, stuff on Amazon's always changing. Uh, products get discontinued. New versions of stuff come out. So it's always really important to kind of pay attention to what's going on in the market. And you'll see that there's generally kind of a pattern, right? Um, stuff will come out. Let's say a uh, new team associated buggy, a new two wheel drive buggy will come out. And then about six months later, it'll come out with a stadium truck and then uh, a short course truck, sometimes at the same time. But there's kind of a pattern to how these things flow. So when a new buggy comes out, well, you know the short course truck is going to come out. When you know the short course truck comes out, there's probably going to be a stadium truck around the corner. So anyways, there's kind of an ebb and flow to how products get released. That's normal in any sort of market. And RC is no different. So <clears throat> in terms of buying low, uh, Horizon Hobby always has sales on their website. There's a little outlet button you can click on. There's stuff that goes to clearance. Uh, they have price drops, uh, sales, all that kind of stuff. So I would definitely check out their website periodically, at least once a week, see what's on sale. You know, right now the Arma Granite 4x4 is on sale for 15% off. So it's 255 instead of 300 normally. You can get a really nice radio like this, the Spectrum DX5C, which I think is excellent. Um, that's also 15% off, so instead of 130, you're paying around, you know, 120, 115, something like that. Um, so there's always stuff on sale. Um, something like this, the low C tenacity, I picked up for 250. I mean, that's a kit that's usually 400 dollars. Uh, it was on sale for 250 earlier in the year. So um, yeah, I mean, really good values all the time. Uh, another good source for finding stuff pretty cheap is RC4U77 on eBay. That person, for whatever reason, gets returned Horizon Hobbies uh, products. So they're, they're basically selling brand new stuff that maybe was run once or near new. And you can get stuff quite ex inexpensively. So I picked up an E6 Amp MT for $92, I think. It's regularly a $140 RC truck. Really good value. So the stuff is available out there. Now, back in the day, there used to be tower hobbies where you could pick up, uh, you know, really nice coupon codes, get stuff really cheap. Um, I picked up like a Futaba 3PV radio for, I think, like $85. I mean, pretty ridiculous prices. Um, they don't allow coupon codes anymore on most of the stuff, but um, there are still sites out there like LA Parts Warehouse. You can use coupon codes even, I think, on Team Associated and low stuff. So, yeah. A main, Horizon, Tower, don't, but there are still other places you can get coupon codes and get stuff for cheap. So buying low is really important uh, to stretching your dollar. And, and the converse or the other part of that is selling high, right? So again, the products kind of ebb and flow. Um, that Futaba 3PV radio I picked up for $85. Well, around you know a year later, Great Plains was having problems. Uh, they had to file for bankruptcy. Uh, a lot of their product line wasn't available anymore. And so for whatever reason, you couldn't get Futaba radios in the US for like uh, three or four months. And so, you know, the simple economics, um, supply and demand, when the supply is low, the NIMBAN is going to go up and prices are going to go up. So that's a good time to sell. So I sold my Futaba 3PV radio for around uh, $95, I think, something like that. So I actually made money on my Futaba radio. Um, another good example is this uh, Tenacity Performance Kit I got here. So the Performance Kit is like a set of upgrades for your low-C Tenacity, the aluminum chassis, shocks, shock towers, uh, sway bars, adjustable turnbuckles, all, all kinds of stuff. It sells for $100 for that upgrade kit. And you know, earlier this year, I picked one up at my local hobby store. It was 
debating whether to run it or not. Um, wasn't really sure if I was going to keep my low C tenacity. And for whatever reason, you know, stuff goes out of uh, stock and the performance kit was another one of those things. So I bought this performance kit for $100. I didn't run it. I just kind of was thinking about running it. And I saw that you couldn't get it anywhere else in the country. So I actually sold it for like, uh, I think I paid, I, I think I sold for like $180 or something ridiculous. I made like $80 on this kit just because someone else wanted to buy it and you couldn't get anywhere else in this country. Now, uh, Another example is my Arma Granite 4x4 uh, BLX. That kit, I paid $300. Uh, you can get it right now for a little bit less, but I paid $300 right when it came out. Um, and earlier this year, for whatever reason, Arma can't keep their inventory in stock. And so uh, you couldn't get an Arma Granite anywhere. I mean, online, locally, whatever, they were completely out of stock everywhere. And so I ended up selling on eBay for I think $280 or something like that. So it ended up costing me like $20 to run that RC kit for, you know, eight months or so. So I'm not saying you can always make money on the stuff or whatever, but just pay attention to what, when things are coming in and out of stock, what the inventory levels look like, when things are getting released. And you know, you'll have some idea on uh, what the value is going to hold. Now, again, as part of selling high, you got to realize when stuff is going to get uh, obsolete. So, you know, the Arma 6S line, they kind of come out in a certain order. You know, the V1s come out in kind of a certain order. I think like the Typhon and uh, Italian come out first and then the Creighton and some of the other ones come out later. So uh, there's a specific order and you can tell, hey, uh, you know, it's about time for this product to get refreshed. Uh, it's probably a good time to sell the old one before it becomes outdated and you'll get the most bang for the buck you know i sold my b64 earlier this year because i knew they were going to come out with a b74 soon now I, I never really know exactly when they're going to come out but um you know just kind of pay attention make some educated guesses and you'll be able to sell your your old stuff for more money than uh you know you would if you have to wait around a while so right now for example the tlr 224 2.0 it's pretty old you know they're kind of working on a four-wheel drive buggy i mean a lot of manufacturers will kind of drop hints about stuff they're working on or they'll kind of tell you hey we're not working on this so like the sct 3.0 they're probably not going to update anytime soon because no one really buys short course trucks anymore so anyway it's a good time to sell the, the four-wheel drive tlr if you've got one and you know wait for the new one to come out probably i would guess within the next you know four months or something like that i don't know but uh, that's my best guess so buy low sell high and you'll save more bucks that way and get more out of your dollar Another thing I recommend doing is just working with your local hobby store, your local track, whatever, and just kind of be around, be useful, provide some value to them, right? Um, I'm not saying be an employee of that store or track, although if you do, you probably can get some discounts. But, you know, kind of hang out, uh, help cover for them if, you know, they got to help do some of the racing or help newbies out at the track, uh, you know, answer questions, uh, help people fix things. Uh, just generally be useful, you know, help maintain the track or redo the track if they need someone to pick up a shovel and, you know, move some dirt or whatever. Um, so some other ideas, maybe you're good at IT, you're good with computers, uh, you can help your local store or local track uh, do their networking or their, you know, sales computers, whatever. Um, or maybe you're good at making flyers, doing advertising. Uh, you're artistic, you can, you know, produce some things, help out your local track, um, and, you know, maybe work something out with them. Um, so anyways, you know, just try to find ways that you can use your skill sets and help out uh, your local store or track. You know, they may or may not kind of help you out as well, but, you know, life is about building mutually beneficial relationships, a lot of win-win type stuff. And the more value you can provide to somebody else, you know, the more value uh, they'll try to provide for you. Uh, that's just the way life works. And, um, you know, I've seen that before. People help out the track, maybe, you know, get some products or whatever, or some discounts. Um, and, you know, if you like being around at the track anyways, and might as well just be useful, pick up trash, whatever, just be a good person. And uh, I think things will work out a little better for you. Another thing I want to cover is that uh, there are other ways just to kind of uh, produce some income or uh, you know help yourself out. Uh, for example, obviously I have an RC channel. I get some ad revenue. 
I got a Amazon uh, Associates uh, account, so if you buy stuff, you know, through links, you know, I get a little bit of money. Now, it's not a lot of money. I'm not gonna quit my day job or anything, but you know, a few bucks here and there helps me buy more RC stuff. You know, it's it's sort of mutual beneficial. I can buy more RC stuff. I can share more RC stuff. Um, you guys will click on more videos, whatever. You know, it's just kind of a good thing. Um, I'm not saying start a YouTube channel, but there are other things you can do, right? Some people, you know, do uh, have an eBay chop shop, right? So they buy new products, chop it up, uh, sell the parts, make a little bit of money, whatever. Um, there, there's ways to basically kind of hustle and, and look for little things here and there in the arts community. For example, another thing I did when I was in college, I started a paintball club, right? I did it because I loved playing paintball. I was big into paintball in college. Uh, before I did RC, but I started a club, you know, we had members, I worked deals with local uh, stores, local paintball fields, uh, I could buy paintballs, which, which are the most expensive part of the sport, but I could buy paintballs, at, you know, pretty much wholesale from some stores, and then, uh, you know, we would sell them uh, for slightly more, but, you know, still at a discount, and, and that way we could raise money for our club to, to spend, uh, to help the club out. So. You know, maybe start an RC club at your at your school or whatever, at your corporate place. Um, help set up corporate events. I don't know. There's all kinds of things you can do um, if you are creative, think about it, and just kind of look for opportunities. So everything in RC is not free, right? Armin's not going to come and just start dropping off uh, brand new trucks and cars on your front doorstep, you know, unless you're an Aussie RC playground. Shout out to Voss there. But um yeah, you know, you, you got to work a little bit. You got to look for opportunities. You got to create opportunities for yourself. And, um, you know, I think that'll help you in the long run. So anyways, uh, that's pretty much it. Just some tips and strategies I use to uh, help stretch my RC dollar, produce a little income. I mean, you can obviously also look for sponsorships and stuff if you're, if you're a racer. Oh, another thing about racing, you know, in the racing world, there's a lot of turnover, right? Racing is expensive, takes a lot of time. There's a commitment where, you know, if there's a race series, you got to show up every week for five weeks in a row, whatever. But racing probably produces more turnover in the RC world than uh, any other part of the segment. And so, RC stuff is expensive, you know, but you can get really nice stuff from X racers. Uh, I bought this giant box of tires from a guy who was getting out of racing. It was like four hundred dollars worth of tires. I think I paid him like one hundred and fifty dollars. I ended up selling like half the tires anyways because I couldn't use that many tires. So I pretty much ended it with a bunch of tires for free. You know, I also try to provide links to any good deals I see on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you hit the add notifications button, you know you'll see that as well if you subscribe to my channel um, I like to post deals if I find something so anyways hope this video helped thanks for watching please like share subscribe hit the add notifications button and look for more videos soon thanks for watching